My job is to research stuff, research and then put into practice working with other people and researching with other researchers. AppSumo are doing a deal at the moment on their website that is going through lots of software and applications and Afori is a research tool with AI. So obviously I've got to have a look. And you can see here at the moment I'm using Zotero. I've been using Zotero for years and I've got plenty of articles and books and things inside of here with tags and loads of other stuff. So I know what I'm doing when it comes to using Zotero. But this AI research tool first is online, which is different from Zotero, and it has AI access. So the three main questions I have going into this is first, can I replace Zotero with a 4E AI? Can I write with it? Because Zotero and Obsidian link, I do my writing in Obsidian. So is there an integration somewhere that lets me work there? And three, is the AI, the additional feature, the additional tool, really that useful, really any good? Now jumping straight in, this looks very similar to Zotero, so I like the fact that I'm not having to learn a new UI. We've got the search at the top, we've got the tags in the bottom left, then in the left ribbon, very similar to Obsidian and other tools, we can navigate between sections. So we've got a user guide, which I did use previously, so I can go through this without looking like I don't know what I'm talking about, even though I still kind of don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but then we have the API documentation, the credits, authentication, and there's nothing really special about this from what I've seen. It's you've got credits and there's that much money. That's how you're going to pay for it. And for those of you that want to do API keys, all of the information is here, which is nice to see inside of the app. You don't need to go to other help documentation. But in order to do anything, obviously, I'm going to need to import items. So because this is online, we'd need to upload a file, which is why we have the upload file, upload URL or upload DOI which if you're familiar with a reference manager, every reference manager really does this. So I'm just gonna upload one of the files I have from my Zotero. And you can see we've got a PDF option, a docx, which is Microsoft Word, TXT, Markdown, which is what Obsidian uses, which is interesting. And then we've got EPUB and PPTX. I'm gonna upload an article I'm very familiar with so I can check the AI afterwards. You can see this is where it's stored. It's in my Zotero library storage, and that's the ID. I don't really need to know what it is, but if I split the screen, you can see I'm gonna drag the PDF into the app, and now it's going to say file upload. So I'm going to upload it. And now we have the first paper in here. And as you would expect, it's got the information. So it's got the authors, it's got the size, date published. And when we click on this tab at the top right, and then gives them more information. So that's the information tab, which again, similar to most reference managers, we've got the information, citation information, notes. So at the moment, I don't have any notes in here because obviously I've just uploaded it. And then we can view the file. Now I've tried double clicking, but it doesn't let you go into the file by double clicking. You've got to go to the side and then view it, which is a different user experience, but it still works. So view file. And as I scroll down, because this document's actually in Zotero, I've already got highlights from Zotero. So it's brought in those highlights. But if it's a brand new document, you of course wouldn't have those highlights. And again, it looks very similar to the Zotero reader. We've got all the colors we can pick. We've got a text highlight. We've got an area highlight and we've got the sticky notes. So click on the text, highlight the text, and now it goes red. Click on the area, highlight the area, now it goes red. If I click on the highlight, right click, I can then change the color to yellow. I can then add a comment, which if we have a look at the top right, we can say view notes. It's now going to show me those notes. But as you'll notice, it's only showing the two I've made inside of this app. So it's not showing me any of these Otero highlights because they are on the PDF file. But those vigilant will see if you use the at, you can chat with AI. When I go to AI, it then gives me all the AI options. But as you see, this model is only available for professional or unlimited plans. So I'm going to use the Azure GPT 3.5 so everyone can see what it's going to do. And with this text highlight, what I've done is I've asked the AI to summarize this sentence. And you can say this sentence from blah, blah, blah. And it gives me a summary. But that was the first line of the abstract and it didn't actually finish the whole line. So I'm going to actually do a practical example here. Now I've scrolled down to this definition. This is a definition that the authors give for what effective coaching looks like. You can see as I've already got this as a highlight, it won't let me highlight this as text. So bear, in, bear that in mind. I'm going to go with the first section instead. And I've asked the AI to explain what this first section means about coaching effectiveness. Effectiveness. And reading this, although it gives me the information that I would expect, it says that it's combining coaching effectiveness, expert coaches, etc, etc, and then goes on to say the definition likely combines various aspects of coaching, teaching, positive psychology and athletes development literature. Those points were actually added from this section, which isn't necessarily true. Because the teaching literature, although does discuss professional, interpersonal and intrapersonal knowledge, it's not talking about athletes, competent confidence, connection and character, because in teaching, it's normally students in school. 
So just like most AI tools, it's added something without giving nuance and context, which is explained within the paragraph. So I'm going to highlight the whole paragraph and ask, what does this mean? And for me, this tool is doing a great job at summarizing the highlights. It's giving me all the points. The AI is doing its job. It's just, I think, my personal disdain for AI oversimplifying or explaining something that I can read straight away, because everything that's inside of this section here is already in the definition. So the AI has somewhat repeated lines rather than added anything. Now, a quirk inside of this tool is that when I when you go to the delete button, you have to click and hold. And although it sounds good and looks good in practice, it's annoying <laughs> because you have to click and hold every time you want to delete something. So if there's two or three deletes, it takes a bit of time. Just my personal preference. So that's the article. Let's see if we can add a tag. So we click on the article, we go to the info tab and then go to add tag. And I made a done tag earlier and you can see that's create tag. Let's say waiting and now I've got a waiting tag so I can say I've done this one but now I'm going to add a book so this is a PDF of a book and let's have a look well it hasn't quite brought in all the information but Zotero doesn't do that either all the time so it doesn't have titles so I'd have to put in the metadata for that after a bit of loading time we now have the PDF document oh I don't like okay this is maybe a book but I, I don't like the black when I'm scrolling and here we are page 15 and I assume when I push the text highlight it lets me just highlight okay delete there we go yep so you can highlight books and now we have two sources in here this is where the AI could get really interesting because we can go research assistant and then we can add the documents so I'm going to connect files and I'm going to connect both the book and the article to this AI chat and I'm going to ask it okay what is effective coaching we have an article that gives us a definition of effective coaching and then we have a book that's got like 300 plus pages about effective coaching so we should be able to get some consensus between those two sources okay at the first look it seems to have completely ignored the second source and is just using the first article so now I've asked it to compare the two documents for effective coaching. Maybe I'm missing something here, but document one is giving me the article and then document two is also giving me the article. It's not talking about the book. If I click into the file viewer, you can see we've got the two articles. We've got the article and then we've got the book. So the book is definitely there. So I've put the book into the search and I've asked it what is effective coaching related to the book. Okay, so now we've got somewhere, but if I click on there and go to view file, it says it's going to show me the highlight, but I don't see the highlight. So if I move that up and down every once in a while, I get a, a blip, but I can see the file page number. Well, it says 129 there, even though it's got 133 down there. But having read the book a few times, and I've got it right in front of me, actually, uh, these points are actually valid. If I hadn't read the book, this would be a really nice summary. AI is speeding up my process of reading like a 300-page book into just four points. Because in theory, if I haven't read the book, I may be reading this and go, okay, task involving. What does that specifically mean? So I'm going to say, what does task involving mean? And here we go. Now, apart from the additive words of just repeating the question, I like it. It's pretty good. So if I jump back to the library, I've now got the conversation. So the research assistant conversation here. This is the conversation that I had with the two articles. And from what I've seen, you can have more. So with file viewer, we can connect more files. So if we add three or four files, you could do a lit review and ask questions about both papers. I assume depending on the prompts, my prompting is very, very beginner. But as the library fills out, the prompts could be really useful and just quickly going through five or six articles that may be saying the same thing or suggesting the same thing. And for clarity, that is not possible to my understanding, at least inside of Zotero. Those vigilant will also notice you've got shared libraries similar to Zotero, so you can share work. And from what I've seen, you can also share comments inside of the articles as well. But that's not something I do. I prefer to work on an article and then someone else work on an article and then we discuss it afterwards rather than working in the same place. But I think that's a workflow preference. So coming back to those three beginning questions, does it replace Zotero? No, I don't think so. Can I write with it? I can for surface notes and for highlighted points, but I couldn't find an export to Obsidian or an exported highlighted file that I could use with Obsidian seamlessly or usefully. So I don't think I would write with it either. However, using the AI to explore the paper, that is a use case that I may have for this tool especially when trying to combine or synthesize multiple articles and asking it to compare five, 10, however many articles. That's where I see the use case of this tool for me at least. But as AppSumo have our offer going on at the moment and it's free to test out, there's a link in the description below for you to test it for yourself.